Now, what is the relationship with the crystals? Now, let's consider a cubic crystal. Again, this photograph is from, uh, this figure is from introduction to the solid state. Now, you can see I have a lattice which is just the external structure plus I have to add atom bases which are atoms or molecules. Once I choose a lattice and basis then only I will get a crystal. So now this is the most symmetric structure in crystallography a cubic structure. Please see that there is one plane here. Now the thing is that there are also other planes which I can draw like this. There are other planes, other planes. But I can invoke those other planes by a symmetry operation. So I consider one which are inequivalent are this. There is one more mirror plane along the body diagonal. So if you join these opposite edges, so there are actually there are three fourfold rotation axes. One two, three, there is a rotation axis. Then there are four threefold rotation axis which are actually if I go along the body diagonal so along the body diagonals there are actually three fourfold rotation axis. So three fourfold rotation axis four threefold because there are Eight, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the 8 corners, adding them to you get 4. So there are 2 fold axes. Uh, sorry, I am sorry. There are 3 fold axes. 3 fold axes. Fold axes. And there are 3, three fold axes. 4. Which are number is 4. Then so, for a cube, let me just be a little more clear about it. This is a cubic figure. So, there are three fourfold axes. Then, when I add the body diagonals and rotate around them, then there are, because there are eight corners, so there are four diagonals. 4 and the symmetry around the diagonals is 3 fold, 3 fold. Also if you join the opposite center point of opposite edges then I will get 2 fold axis, 2 fold axis and there are 6 of them, 2 fold, 3 fold put the fold at wrong place, 4 of those and 4 fold, 4 fold, there are 3 of them. So these are the rotations that I have got here. So there are 3 4 fold rotations, 4 3 fold rotations, 6 2 fold axis. But all of these are actually connected by symmetry operations each, with each other. Because I can combine, let us say, one, this fourfold axis. If I rotate it around this, I can come back to this fourfold axis. So I can generate the other axis from one axis by operation, by some symmetry operation. Also, there is a center of inversion where all the diagonals meet. Across that, I can do an inversion of operation. An inversion operation means x, y, z will be going to minus x, minus y, minus z or in crystallography they write, write it x bar, y bar, z bar. So by a symmetry operation, in inversion operation, I can go and there is a point of inversion at the center. So there is an inversion symmetry at least for a q. So here the q so it is given as four fourfold axis perpendicular mirror M. A rotor inversion axis is a rotation as well as inversion operation, which is three bar. 
and two-fold axis which cannot be in because this cannot be created from this four-fold axis that's why it is from we write it separately and with a perpendicular mirror that you can see here shown so the international representation is 4 by m 3 bar 2 by m for a cubic crystal so this is important to know but actually when we do the fitting we don't go through it we simply use the published tables so this is actually the 14 bravo lattices which gives all possible crystallographic structures in our known world of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 fold property uh, symmetries. So there are triclinic, monoclinic, triclinic, monoclinic, orthorhombic, trigonal, cubic, tetragonal, cubic, trigonal and hexagonal. And for example, the most symmetric one is cubic. So, and then cubic has got uh, either simple cubic or BCC cubic or FCC cubic. So, here I have introduced one more thing which is known as primitive, primitive and non-primitive primitive crystal lattices. In a primitive crystal lattice, if you take one unit cell, there is one basis or one lattice point, one equivalent, equivalent, equivalent unit, whatever it is, it can be iron, iron of course it is not simple cubic, but if you take a simple cubic structure, there will be one equivalent unit every in every unit cell. That means how it comes because if you consider a cube there are eight corners eight corners each corner shared by each corner is shared by eight of these unit cells so eight one eighth and each one is shared by eight so one eighth of each so it gives me one unit cell. Now if I put a body center, a, also an atom at the body center, which is often the case, then I have got one coming from this corner atoms and one coming from the central atom and there are two equivalent, two equivalent atoms. Now when I come to FCC, then this Q has the corner atoms, the corner atoms, the corner atoms as well as at one atom at the center of each face. Now you can clearly see from the geometry that the one which is at the center of each face is shared by two of those, two of those. The one unit cell which is on the left hand side, the other one right hand side which I have not drawn. So each one I have got half contribution. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six faces. So you get three atoms coming from the face centered positions and one atom coming from the corner positions. So there are four atoms in an FCC unit cell. So not only I have got primitive cubic unit cell, but you have so simple cubic, face center or body center. So the, the way we define a cubic cell is A equal to B equal to C and all of the angles are 90 degree. When you go slightly off from here, A is equal to B not equal not equal to C is a tetragonal. A is equal to B but not equal to C. All the three angles are 90 degree. That means, so now in case of cubic, symmetry and the translational symmetry, not only point group symmetry, allows me to have simple cubic, body centered cubic or face centered cubic. In case of tetragonal, it is only 
body center that is allowed when a is equal to b not equal to c all three angles are 90 degree so accordingly i have written down here which actually have been derived from the symmetry and requirement of translational symmetry point group symmetry and the requirement of translational symmetry worked out by the mathematicians and the crystallographer that these are the possible unit cells which are known as bravais lattices protein bravais lattices in condensed matter along with that you have got 32 point group symmetries i explained to you what are the point groups and here i have given the table i have don't have time to explain all of this but let me just consider one let us say cubic easy to see you see in cubic the symmetry operations are which are given here and the symmetry operations international uh, table it gives me these are the symmetry operations symmetry symmetry elements are given here according to the elements on the left so this i have taken from this source you can and this is used heavily by us because we have to deal for for example tetragonal we do say that it's a when i input it to full prop it's a 4 by mmm structure that's what the input this indices actually to mention that it's a tetragonal or for hexagonal it can write 6 by mmm structure so there is a six fold axis and you can see that the mmm there are three mirror planes here there are three mirror planes and the four fold axis in case of orthorhombic you have got three two fold axis you also have three mirror planes so but we write this in this is for any program that we use to solve the crystallographic structure so i have told you about the 14 bravais lattices These are the 14 bravais lattices it's given here and the 32 point groups this together with two more things 14 bravais lattices and 32 point groups give us 230 space groups in crystallography there is two more symmetry operations i need to tell you there is with translational symmetry we have something called screw axis and glide planes so it is not just point groups 14 bravais lattices also we have to consider screw axis and glide planes what are they i'll just quickly tell you let us see along with translation if a rotation is there for example here you see take this atom a actually these are all atoms or units can, can be a molecule also which i am putting at this point so you see there is a translation of c by 4 and a rotation of 90 degree another translation of c by 4 another rotation of 90 degree position 3 another rotation of c by 4 and the rotation of 90 degree it takes me from 1 to 4 identical positions in the unit cell or in the repetitive unit cell so this axis here I, not only i translated but i also went in a screw that's why it's known as a screw axis so translation associated with rotation is known as a screw axis and this together with 32 point groups and 14 bravais lattices gives me a screw axis similarly i have taken a simple example of a glide plane the sources are here so you can see instead of rotation if i move in a certain direction and i reflect and i reflect then you see it is a half a half a translation reflection the the unit is shown as a i can say as a as a small engine so the engine reflected below the plane it can be a molecule actually it is available in case of molecule then again another half translation and another reflection in the glide plane the glide plane is shown here so that means you translate and rotate you get a screw axis you translate and reflect you get a glide plane there is an inherent difference between these two in case of screw axis if you put a molecule then it maintains the handedness of the molecule but in case of glide plane this translation and reflection does not maintain the handedness and there are cases where 
in reality in crystallographic structures that such things happen so screw axis and glide planes are the last two symmetry operations that give us the uh, all 230 space groups we know but ultimately after talking about all these things all we need to give as an input is the is the is the space group classifications when we try to solve the crystallographic structure in the paramagnetic phase. Now, in addition to the crystallography space group, there are magnetic space groups that have an extra dimension because we also add time and there is a time inversion symmetry and reflection around the time axis is allowed. This is because I know that uh, the in the simplest explanation current gives you magnetic field but current is dq by dt and dq by dt goes to minus dq by dt if I do a time inversion. So like all other Newtonian motions the magnetic field does not have time inversion symmetry it changes sign and that has to be accounted for when I input my data for solution of a magnetic structure. So in a magnetic space group each side has a spin colored black and white and time inversion or time reversal will interchange them in a magnetic space group. So now I come to the fourth step but this you have to actually learn through a tutorial I mean so once the propagation vector is determined crystallographic structure is determined then the program BASIREF gives us the basis vectors of the irreducible representation that means these are the basis vectors with which we can uh, generate any translation along with the propagation vector with the help of this program we can determine the Shubnikov or the magnetic symmetry operators uh, Shubnikov uh, Russian scientist who first introduced the magnetic symmetry operators and used them directly in the as the basis vectors in the irreducible representation of the crystallographic group now, after talking to you about the procedure how you input the magnetic structure as well as the crystallography structure for the for determination of magnetic structure I will come to some of the results very interesting results unique to neutron diffraction okay so we have discussed the genesis of uh, symmetry operations the space groups the, the space groups coming from the point group operations and the uh, 14 Bravais lattices in case of condensed matter crystallography now I will share with you some of the very interesting results so that you understand the importance of the technique and the capability of it to probe actual magnetic structures so first I will talk to you about a compound which is known as a Prussian blue analog done in our group the authors are here interestingly is neutron diffraction now why I chose this because I have chosen iron compound because you know that iron is a ferromagnetic material as an element it's well known but look at the structure that you obtain when you use a compound for iron and iron cyanide in this so this is a FECN, FE, FECN6, 4H2 this is the diffraction pattern now as uh, I told you earlier when discussing the tutorial with Carvayal here the data is taken at 50k uh, above the ordering temperature and then below the ordering temperature at 1.5k now 
interestingly you see the peak intensity the intensity is appearing in these places so here this is a diffraction pattern which immediately tells you that certainly it is not just a ferromagnetic material because in case of ferromagnetic material the intensity is only boost the already existing black peaks but you have got extra peaks here and this has been fitted by using the full prof suit by the authors i have mentioned given the reference and you see the structure that you obtain the microscopic structure here in this structure the magnetic unit cell is double of the normal unit cell because here in this compound there are two ions fe1 and fe2 and their magnetic moments are absolutely different one has got a five bore magneton which is at 0 0 but the other one at half 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 has got a magnetic moment of 0.8 plus minus 0.02 bore magneton it's very much lower and but they are aligned ferromagnetically or rather i should say that they are aligned parallelly with each other but the magnetic moments are different from one side to another and that's why the magnetic unit cells are double so at the edge of this magnetic unit cells you can see these are the irons these are the irons which have got high moment and this is the oxygen uh, sorry iron moment which is low they are the low moments so high moments and low moments these two together comprise the iron lattice and this is a, a unique result uh, and this you can get by no other technique because here when um so i started with an iron lattice i started possibly i don't know the i don't know their starting point of the calculation or the optimization but ultimately at the end the results that fits best this diffraction pattern gives me two magnetic moments at two iron sides aligned parallelly so magnetic unit cell has doubled and you have got a parallel structure that means uh, just as we have in ferromagnetic structure but the local moments are different i will take another example for you this is a, a, a nickel copper nickel mnsb so here in this pattern this pattern has been fitted so interestingly this is a pattern which gives us ferromagnetic as well as, well as anti ferromagnetic peaks so this compound again it starts with a very simple magnetic moment of nickel nickel we know that it's again a ferromagnet uh, but here with 0.54 bore magneton for a nickel element but here the ordering in this compound is different here we have got the coexistence of ferromagnetic and anti ferromagnetic order in this case i just uh, show you the fitted results so here the anti ferromagnetic spin structure comes from the orientation here you can see that uh, the the crystal structure here and they are actually this uh, octahedra fuo5 octahedra here but at the center you have the atoms here and uh, you can see the spins which have been fitted and there is a 120 degree anti ferromagnetic spin structure when it is 120 degree oriented you always have a component which is anti ferromagnetic and a component which is ferromagnetic and in this case interestingly when we fit the crystal structure then we find that there is a distortion uh, this is uh, you can see this is the magnetic moment versus temperature so this is the phase transition point where it goes from ordered to disordered structure this matches with the change in a and c parameters of the crystal lattice so this is 
this magnetic phase transition is associated with the change in the volume of the unit cell that means uh, uh, if you remember i was calculating jij which is a electron is the exchange integral so the exchange integral changes in such a manner that you get an antiferromagnetic order together with a change in the volume and a and c parameter of the cell so the basically the cell expands you can see it at this point suddenly it expands a and c both are show a tendency to expand and this is a very interesting result so you have got a nil temperature of 130 degree for this compound so i just discussed with you two examples because if one goes through the literature there will be thousands of papers where actually all the major neutron sources like ill grenoble or uh, uh, okri sns okri and also our own reactor dhruva a very large number of research is going on magnetic materials and their microscopic structure not only because of the in, their our interest in the fundamentals of them because their macroscopic physical properties are of interest for magnetic memories and many other applications so i will just briefly mention here to complete the magnetization measurements there is one more tool known as neutron depolarization technique so neutron depolarization technique depends on precision of a polarized neutron beam around a field in the sample or rather the field in a domain i'll try to explain simply this but this is a transmission measurement so here i do use a polarized neutron beam let me just emphasize for all this <laughs> all these experiments that i present to you we use unpolarized neutron beam but for depolarization experiments we need a polarized neutron beam we apply magnetic field in a sample there are domains inside the sample magnetic domains and they are aligned with an external applied field h and in the neutron path the domains force the neutron moment to undergo precision and this precision causes depolarization depolarization a loss of polarization of the neutron beam which we measure in this experiment and this is an excellent technique to get an estimate of the domain size this was introduced by theoretic welt at delft Uh, to find out the domain size it's a, in 1970s and this has also been very successfully utilized in dhruva time permits i will try to show you some of the results taken at dhruva with this i come to an end for the lecture on magnetic neutron studies for understanding condensed matter structure